We are on a mission. A mission to save and revitalize independent pharmacy. On the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast, you'll get actionable business advice. Hear stories from industry leaders. And share a laugh or two with us. Fuel your passion for pharmacy. One conversation at a time. Four. Three. Two. One. Welcome to the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. I'm your host, Jeff Key, president of Pioneer X, and today I'm here with my co-host, Marsha. Hi, I'm Marsha Bivens. I'm the director of marketing for Pioneer X. Today, our guest is Chris Ray, and he is the head of pharmacy for BioLite. Chris, welcome. We were talking to our uh, our little millennial um, fellow employees <laughs> before we started and trying to uh, listen, listening to... Uh, and she's I just got to do you even know me from the from the control first room. example of Jeff's foot in his, <laughs> is in his mouth. So we're going to see <laughs> we're going to see how many current sayings that you know since you're well, about like, our age. It's, it's These are the, ones I didn't know. It's also the big thing on TikTok like parents are coming at are coming at their at their kids with like stuff that we said and they're coming at us and going what do you know? So um, do you know what dead means? So we're going to give you a saying. We're going to see what you know. What does it mean to be? If somebody says, I'm dead. Or that was dead. I, I guess tired. No, I'm not cool at all. So I'm not cool at all. Yeah, well, I okay. I guess let's start. Do you have kids in the age that are going to be using some of the modern slang? No, I have some nieces, but, you know, I'm a bulldog parent, so <laughs> I, I do not. So it's, this is going to be a lot of fun to learn. Nice. So if they say I'm dead, it means they're laughing so hard. So... LOL is still a thing, but I guess LMFAO is not a thing anymore or less of a thing. I don't know. I'll have to ask my kids. All right. So if you say something is Gucci. Ooh. Yeah, I think I know that. Like fashionable, hot. Yeah. See, that's what I thought it was. Good or going well. Yeah. Same off the drive. That. All right. Snatched. Mm. So Uh, you got abducted. Uh, you know, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so, uh, Marsha's dress is snatched, looking good or on point. Yes. What snatched means. Oh, she added the. Uh, See, I like looking on point. Yeah, yeah, looking on point. So, tea. It's another no word. No idea. It's another word for gossip. So, spill the tea. Spill. So the you tea. think about people talking oh. about gossip over tea. Mm-hmm. Okay, then let's go with some with some stuff that we're more familiar with. So. Um, this was one I just saw on TikTok that I was just like dying over. Um, so you're in an AOL chat room. Do you remember those days? Um, oh, somebody yeah. messages you ASL. What do you say? Oh, ASL. Uh huh. <laughs> the response out of his teenager was so freaking awesome, by the way. What do you say? What the teenager The say? teenager went American Sign Language. But oh, yeah. Why are you doing sign language in a chat room? <laughs> But no, it's age, <laughs> sex, location. So that's what people would, would welcome you into the chat room with. They're like, they want to know what what gender, what age they're talking to. Um, so that was the one that threw me back into my high school like days. it's like 40 male prison. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no. Mo- most teenage boys went 17 and yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I was like, and exiting. So, well, okay. Well, um, tell us about um, your product. So your BioLite, we met you this um, past July in um, Amerisource Bergen in Orlando. In a, in a flame of like three big trade shows in one month. Back to a big back blur. to back. We saw several people <laughs> yeah, walking was, around with your drinks. I, I don't know how you guys did it. You know, 21 days straight and putting up your booth compared to my booth. It's just phenomenal how, you know. It was uh, it was a lot, but we had a great time at the shows, and I you know I think that our product is something that was a fun product for these folks as they're walking around. You know they're curious to see what it's about, and um, you know essentially what it is. It's a electrolyte supplement that is equivalent to an IV bag from a hydration standpoint, 
Um, and it's also got milk thistle, ginger for nausea and uh, endocytocysteine for liver support. A physician made it when his wife had breast cancer. She was going through chemo treatments. So what he was trying to do is help keep her uh, hydrated and, and keep her nausea down and try to flush her system of, of the chemo drugs. And it worked so well that their daughter is the CEO of the company and uh, it's still family owned business. And we're, we're growing an independent pharmacy. And it's been such a fun ride. And I used to work for McKesson as, you know, a, a, a rep. And, you know, I get yelled at a lot less over uh, electrolytes than I do uh, cost of goods and DIR fees and all that fun stuff. So. so electrolytes and liver support. So I bet you went through the product very quickly in Vegas. Yes. Yes. We had so many people you know, that either had a background, bringing their friends over, bringing other stores over saying, hey, man, you got to give him one to save, you know, save his life. You look at him, he's looking pretty rough. And uh, yeah, the hangover crowd, it was, uh, yes. it was prevalent in Vegas. So did it vary? I think the one you tried, what was the flavor? Was it cucumber? It was a melon. It was a green bottle. We have a melon. Yeah, yeah, the melon. Mm -hmm. That makes it salted melon. That was, yeah. yeah. So what was, is there, a ver, is there a variation of the electrolytes? I, I think I remember you saying something that different ones had different strengths of, or is it just different flavors? No, so they, right. They all have the same, you know, formulation. The big difference is just the taste preference. You know, some people are, have an affinity to salt and, you know, the melon probably is the lightest tasting flavor. Uh, citrus is one that, you know, a lot of people that are sweating a lot, working outside in the heat, they really like that uh, citrus because it's it's got a saltier base to it taste-wise. And then we have a berry, which is a sweet. You know, so if somebody's got a stomach bug, they're dealing with, uh, you know, just uh, a fever or cold, you know, they, they tend to like that berry uh, flavor. And then we have a tropical, which is either you love it or you hate it. It's got a pineapple, coconut, mango taste to it. And, uh, you know, I, I really like it, but some people, you know, they they – you know, don't like it. So really, we just want you to find one that you really enjoy. And the difference is, you know, there the, there's dextrose in it, but just a minimal amount to help the electrolyte process through the cell wall. So it doesn't have a real sugary, sweet taste to it. And it doesn't have a fake sh sugar taste to it or a medicinal taste to it. So, you know, I think uh, if you're feeling run down, you're dealing with cramps, you know, migraines, you know, this is a product that you know, stores are using kind of all over the front end to, to connect with customers. So what is your preferential flavor? I like them. I'll drink them all. I'll drink them all warm. I, you know, I'm kind of a, uh, just get it in me, but I like the melon a lot. You know, I, I think that, that that would probably be my favorite. And, um, you know, if you survey 10 different people, they'll have a different uh, priority list of what they prefer. So, you know, I always tell people to try one of, one of each and see, see what's, you know, their flavor. So we're selling this as medicine, right? So basically you come into the pharmacy and uh, you have a stomach deal or you have something going on, you know, we're saying, hey, this is kind of like upsell, right? This is something that will help you, um, you're dehydrated or um, is that kind of the, the way that works? Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, I think of this as a very ancillary product that you can apply to, you know, if somebody comes in with a Zofran prescription, you know, if somebody comes in with an antibiotic for a UTI, um, if some, you know, God forbid somebody is on, on you know, getting chemo or on hospice, you know, stores are applying it that way. Some of our closed door stores are using it in the long term care space because our geriatric population is habitually dehydrated and they're dealing with, you know, uh, UTIs or having to go to the emergency room for, you know, dehydration. So really it's been uh, something that I, it's been fun talking to the stores and how they're creatively, you know, thinking of ways hydration plays a role in so many conditions. You know, I got one the other day said, Hey, you know, some of my folks are coming for, uh, cause this is helping them with breast milk production. So, you know, it's just all, all over really? the board that you can connect it. Interesting. So tell me about the growth. You, you say, is it, is it a fast growing company? You, you see a big uptake? What, how's that going? Yes. Yeah, so it's been a, a fun ride. It's been kind of a roller coaster. Um, when I started, you know, I, I was, uh, I met uh, Jesslyn, the CEO at a uh, association show, tried the product and I was able to help her get it into McKesson um, and just, you know, really liked the product. And so I was you know, working for McKesson a few years and uh, she said, hey, we're ready for someone to come on board and really help us drive this in the pharmacy space. And that was about two years ago. Uh, right now, we're in uh, 3,000 independent pharmacies. Wow. We're in about 18,000 retailers. Um, our, our biggest challenge has been getting the wholesalers to, to because it's a heavy liquid, 
you know, stock it, you know, for the customers. Mm -hmm. But now we're kind of getting over that hump. And I think, you know, our growth is going to be, you know, a lot easier when it's convenient to, for them to order. And um, right now we're behind Gatorade, Powerade, uh, Body Armor and Electrolyte in sales uh, overall in the sports drink wow. space. But my goal is to really, is, you know, get people to associate it as the medical uh, applications because the difference being, you know, this doesn't have all that sugar in it. It's a lot more intense electrolytes. And then he's got all the added stuff for that nausea and liver support. So, you know, from a medical standpoint, we need to position that way. And as we grow our retail space with the independent pharmacies, you know, come up with a strategy for how to get the doctors to understand how to apply this and refer to the, our pharmacy partners. And what about treatment clinics? <clears throat> so now that we have our partnerships with, you know, the wholesalers, uh, we're going to be talking to some of the medical GPOs that, you know, deal with oncologists and uh, deal, you know, with, you know, palliative care. And, you know, I reached mm -hmm. out to uh, Kaiser Permanente yesterday so we can, you know, try to find some partners that are willing to you know, do some some white papers with us and, and really see how this is helping people because every day, you know, we get people reaching out to us um, online uh, telling us how, hey, you know, this really saved my mom after her, her chemo treatment or my dad had COVID last week. And, you know, this is the first thing that really helped him get out of bed and, and deal with the just the brain fog and the fatigue. You know, y'all really helped mm -hmm. us. And that's been the most, you know, every day we have a quote of one of those customers, you know, a testimonial that kind of helps us understand what, you know, we're doing this for. You know, obviously, we're a business and we're trying to grow, but we have a mission to help people feel better. And, uh, you know, thankfully, it's family owned and, and, and they haven't taken the first bit of investment. And Dr. Rollins is still a practicing anesthesiologist. So it's just been a, a neat story and mm -hmm. um, looking forward to you know, getting more of the independent pharmacies on board. Which wholesalers carry it? So everyone now, um, you know, the big three, the regional Smith, Morris Dixon, uh, Mutual Drug, Louisiana Wholesale Drug. Uh, essentially, it, it's it's been a process, but now we're, we're all the wholesalers. So are you the guy? Are you the sales guy? I mean, is there do you have a team at how we've done this is, uh, you know, essentially me and my, my dad have been driving around all over uh, seeing pharmacies uh, in my truck. He's my wheel man, and I jump out and leave some samples. So I've seen uh, 2,500 independent pharmacies uh, got in their store and left samples so far, um, mainly in the southeast. So I've seen some some pretty neat uh, businesses, some pretty neat people, and I've seen some some interesting uh, things as well. But you know, it's been fun to connect with the pharmacies and, and kind of see what people are doing best practice wise. You know, before um, you know, when I was working with McKesson, I was always also heavily involved with CPSN. So it's been good to engage with uh, stores and let them know what the future is and how they can use Pioneer to, to do e-care plans or, you know, use y'all's nutrition depletion module and, and uh, you know, recommend BioLite. So it's just been neat to, to find creative ways to, to help the stores. <laughs> Interesting. So a little bit like um, Solution RX. So probably the ability to, I mean, if somebody's using your product in their pharmacy and using Pioneer, being able to set up, like you said, a care plan that says, hey, if they're taking this drug, you should recommend also BioLite. Right. What kind of yeah. criteria? It's interesting. So that is interesting. So, okay, but you, you started at yeah, McKesson. Ex how exactly. Many, how many years at McKesson were you there? I was there eight. So, you know, I've had kind of an interesting career. I was in, uh, you know, nursing homes as a social worker and then an administrator. Okay. Uh, that leveraged me to, to start working in DME and sports medicine, uh, working with orthopedic doctors, football teams to do braces. McKesson bought out the company I was working for and, uh, you know, I, I applied to, for the independent pharmacy gig. And um, the, the folks there said, this is a very niche industry. If you don't have knowledge of this, uh, then it's going to be tough. So I said, Hey, just, you know, give me a, give me a shot. Give me a shot. I will learn everything I can possibly know. And about that time is when, you know, star ratings came into play and yep. the mm -hmm. pharmacies had to look at, you know, how, how to negate DIR fees and what adherence met. So that's, I just tackled that subject really, really strong. And um, so I had some value to bring every time I walked through the door and that really helped me uh, be a consultant and a solutions expert, as opposed to just somebody coming in, um, that's bothering them. You know, that was my goal is when they, when they saw me come through, 
hey, he's going to have something knowledgeable, valuable for me. I'll take you know, the 10, 15 minutes to talk to him about that because I know it's going to be um, something that's going to help my business. Wow. That's kind of sad that you're not still doing that. They need more of that. They need more of their, their salespeople in there helping them. That's good. You must have done been successful at that, though, with that kind of attitude. Yeah, I loved it. I really... I really enjoyed it. The relationships, you know, with, with those customers were, you know, I have some that are, are best friends of mine, um, you know, at, at, over a decade and really grew to love them. Uh, this just was an excellent opportunity to grow something. And I really believed yeah. in the product and I believed in the family and, you know, they, they just have a lot of integrity. And I think that the, the vision of the medical applications and how many people we can help, um, it's just, about me getting people on board to understand what, what this is. And uh, that's a challenge that I really, really am enjoying. So how, how did you meet, um, how did you get connected with this company going from McKesson to? Yeah. So essentially I tried it at one of the stores in Atlanta, just when, when they, it started out, she was working in the garage and okay. she was, you know, sticking by light in the back, the trunk of her car going to Atlanta based, uh, high schools and Atlanta based pharmacies. Interesting. And one of my customers is in Atlanta and I tried it and said, Hey, I can see how this will really work. Um, and I was always looking for obviously products and, and, and programs to help my pharmacies, you know, wanted to bring something new, like I said, every time. So I said, Hey, I'm going to let pharmacies know in my, my market that this is a option for them. And it's something that's not really available in the chains. Mm -hmm. So it could be something they could leverage and go and talk to the, the athletic director at the high school or the gastro doc down the street, you know, something that's unique. Yeah. And, uh, we got it all into my market. So that made Jesslyn come up and do the pharmacy association. Cause obviously, you know, she's like Tennessee pharmacies must be selling moonshine out the back and buy a light out the front <laughs> or something. So, uh, I met her at the show and said, yeah, those are my customers. I'd love to help you. Um, you know, and we developed a friendship after that, uh, you know, just cause both of us, you know, had passion for it and passion for independent pharmacy. And she just kept up and said, if it ever becomes where you want you know, to, to grow something and get out of the corporate world, you know, mm -hmm. we would love to have you. And the timing was right. Hmm. So that's super interesting. So <clears throat> you kind of hit on something there uh, and maybe you might go into more detail in it, but saying, Hey, pharmacy, use this as a tool to go talk to the local high schools and sports groups and things like that about this product. Um, so you want to talk some more about that? Oh, yeah. So definitely, um, you know, I have, I have stores that now sell pallets of it to the high school football team, but they're also selling KT tape. They're selling, you know, different types of bracing. The moms are coming in and getting prescriptions. You know, so w one of my goals is to help them think creatively how to use, you know, these different tools to to gain prescription business and get people to walk in the door. Because in a lot of areas, they're the only retailer of this product. And same thing with Chris's product at Solutions. You know, these type of niche nutraceuticals are a yeah. way to really uh, go out to the community mm -hmm. and say, hey, doctor, what do you think about this? This right. is something I'm carrying that you can't get everywhere. By the mm -hmm. way, I also do MedSync. I do packaging. I do you know, diabetic education. You know, these are some of the value adds that you can get at an independent community pharmacy that you can't necessarily get through the mail or the chains. And, you know, really sell it to these doctors that, you know, with value-based payment metrics now, you know, not all pharmacies are created equal. And, and dealing with somebody that's going to help their patient population, it's only going to add, you know, value to that practice. So really, you know, using excuses to go out and talk to these people in the community and not only sell by lab, but sell themselves and what they're doing to really enhance the lives of, of the community members and their patients. Yeah, it's super interesting to kind of think about <clears throat> pharmacy as sports medicine, mm -hmm. right, for high schools. Right. And and different kind of stuff because you you got nutrition and probably all of those high you know all well, the sports groups are on right they're on supplements and, and they're 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 on the supplements um, football you've got two a days yeah. especially right now in this I mean down here the heat oh my gosh but I mean yeah and and there's so much sugar in Gatorade and there's and you said there's not sugar or there's not as much sugar. not as much sugar yeah. What is the what is right? The so there's difference? only ten grams I mean, of dextrose. Dextrose is right. Yeah, so dextrose is natural sugar that you would get in an IV, mm -hmm. and it's just there as a transporter. Essentially, you need some sugar to help uh, the cell wall open up. 
for right. the electrolytes to, to get into the cell wall and process properly. But if you drank the equivalent Gatorades to uh, the electrolyte comparison of a BioLite, you'd have to drink 230 grams of sugar to get the same electrolyte profile. And how many Gatorades so, would that be? you know, this is a six to seven. Oh, right, wow. Six to seven Gatorades. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's something that it doesn't have any food dye in it. You know, all, all of the ingredients are natural ingredients. Uh, it's it's just really phenomenal. You know, and the best thing is when, you know, just getting samples to people and letting them try it when they need it. And we, we usually get people to be, bi- we call it BioLite Believers um, after that. So um, it's just it's just cool to see. How long have you been doing the French Bulldog thing? Oh, man. You know, my wife and I had them in our wedding. Um, they're, we're just over the top. Like, I have to tell my wife. Okay, we had the no French more. Bulldogs in our weddings. It's like... Recent? Groomsman and, and or, or like, ring ring bear ring bear and flower. We're so weird. We got married in a dog park that my my wife's company donated to the um, the city of Knoxville, and yeah, we had a ring bear <laughs> and everything was bulldog themed. Um, but now we we have you know we're kind of those weird Discovery Channel people that have bulldog decorations everywhere, and you're gonna make a show because it's over the top. But you know we we love them. They're a big part of of our lives and. You know, from a physical physical affection standpoint, I got one little guy. He just he stays with me all the time. So, can the dogs drink BioLite? Is is that a I, I, yes? I don't see why they couldn't. You know, I see. Is there any kind of animal health? We, we haven't gone down there. Well, you know, I think that they probably wouldn't. You know, naturally try to drink it. You might have to cut it with water. And we have given our little guy some when he had a stomach. You know, he likes to eat rocks like an idiot, and he likes he, to eat he rocks. Has stomach no. issues. Yeah, yeah. It, they're not the smartest. They're a very loving uh, breed, but you know, they're eating rocks is. Uh, it kind of shows what they got going on. <laughs> very loving, but not very smart. Yes, um, I have a friend who has a French like, bulldog. Kind of like me. <laughs> kind of. Kind of the opposite it's, of you, Marcia. Kind of, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Foot and mouth again. We'll edit that out later. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a friend who had a French bulldog, and and it was trying to keep the rocks out of his mouth, and going, no, 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 chew on the stick, dude. Really eating? You, you, this is a French bulldog thing. They eat rocks. I think so. Huh. His name was McBiscuit. <laughs> McBiscuit. M- B- McBiscuit. Oh, I like. That. What are your name? What are your names? Augie, Augie, he was born in August, um, like and then Hazel. Yeah. Augie and Hazel. Augie and Hazel. I like that. So what do y'all do for fun besides run around the dog park? Yeah, so we're here in East Tennessee. You know, we just got so much natural beauty. So, I'm, you know, if I'm not working, I'm outside a lot. So whether it be hiking, camping, you know, on the lake, on the river, uh, just trying to spend, spend time outside in nature and, um, you know, kind of take advantage of, of where we live and, you know, a lot of athletics. I'm a diehard UT fan. It's been a rough decade, but, you know, we're, we're coming around. And, uh, you know, just a lot of reading, a lot of research, a lot of trying to help, you know, people. And and that's, you know, that kind of takes up the time. Mm-hmm. Where in East Tennessee? Knoxville. Knoxville, so okay. We're, we're right, yeah, right on the edge of the Smoky Mountains. Is that the Sea Rock town. City? Is that the part of Tennessee? No, so Rock City's down Chattanooga. Chattanooga, okay. Where okay. I, yeah, yeah. You know, he said, you know, Chattanooga all the way to Asheville. You, you know, you have the mountain side of the Smoky Mountains, and mm-hmm. um, you know, that's basically most of what I covered with McKesson. And I used to just, you know, pinch myself, uh, saying, "Hey, you know, this is I'm the hillbilly rep. I, I, I'm the hillbilly rep. I get to go around, drive around the mountain, and and see uh, see some of the most beautiful areas." Have you ever gone whitewater rafting? Yeah, that's what I was about to ask. Oh yeah. That's an adventure. I've done it yeah, once. The Coe River. Yeah, there's um, the Coe River, which is on the edge of Georgia and Tennessee, and that's what they where they did the '96 Olympics. Wow. Oh. So yeah, we just, um. Yeah, it's pretty cool. How far are you from Pigeon Ford? Oh, uh, I'm not too far. Yeah. Um, probably so that's, about an hour. That's where we. That's where you went whitewater rafting for the first time in your life, right? Or not? Second time. Second the, time. The first time was um, in Spokane. Spokane. Yeah, we had back when we were poor. We were starting out. We um we had a, a conference in Nashville. Nashville. And then we had one in Virginia. And then we had one in, in Virginia. And then was one that Myrtle in Mar- Beach? In it Virginia. Was, we had Virginia and then we had Myrtle Beach. And we had one booth. 
And it was like, okay, there's no way we're going to be able to get this booth from here to there and then from there to there. So we drove it. Put it in a U-Haul. Uh-huh. Drove it across and, and, and managed to hit Pigeon Ford about the time we could take an hour or two and, and go whitewater rafting. Mm-hmm. And, um, then, and then made some detours also um, in North Carolina on our way from Virginia to um, Myrtle Beach. So it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it was... Um, yeah, that, as a matter of fact, that's one of the, I think that's one of the nicest whitewater raftings I've done. It was definitely a lot more, the temperature was more enjoyable than Spokane. Yeah. Yeah, well, that water was cold. Yes. Like, even in June, they're putting 3M wetsuits on us, and, and I'm just like, oh, it was, it was miserable. It wasn't miserable. It wasn't as enjoyable as... You're supposed to remember things more fondly. Than the actual, I, right? I also remember going through the a evil part, that men do well, is interred with their bones. Right? I also remember a part of the going whitewater rafting in Spokane where they're like, "Nobody stand up, please stay seated in the boat because um, this is a it was like disc golf, and so you could see some of them." <laughs> and it's like, "Oh God, why don't they provide helmets for <laughs> this?" You said that you've had some really good. You know, um, some customers who are like, oh, oh, yeah, this is this saved this or this helped me here. What would you say has been your biggest success story since being with BioLite? Yeah, I think that you know, just we did a COVID campaign around uh, stores that were testing uh, for COVID. You know, obviously wanted to support some of the innovative things that pharmacies are able to do in the mm-hmm. you know test treat space. Because uh, that's you know the future. So we gave out some samples uh, to stores that reached out that were testing, and when it, when you know people were getting positive tests, they were given uh, you know bottles to them, and just hearing the response of man, this this stuff really helped me. And then them coming back and, and buying you know a case from the store. So it's one of those things like you always hope uh, a sampling program you know has some return because it's a risk, but yep. you know, that really went smoothly, and uh, it was a way that. You know, we kind of can support the stores in, in the future of, of in a community pharmacy. Um, you know, so what we're trying to do is trying to really use the seasonality of, of, of medical conditions and hydration um, and, and help the stores market it in that way. So we do a big, you know, obviously heat exposure in the summer, mm-hmm. um, you know, people outside playing, people working uh, out, you know, out in the heat. Um, and then in the fall, we get into cough, cold, flu um, and mm-hmm. as we get into spring allergy, so we have marketing material, point of sale stuff that we give to the stores that really help promote it uh, during those times. That I'd say the biggest success is, uh, you know, we thought that this product would be, you know, more in your uh, you know, affluent, you know, suburb areas, pharmacies, mm-hmm. and they would have a lot of success with it. Okay. But what we're finding is rural areas uh, that have active workers, you know, farmers, uh, construction workers, contractors, EMTs, uh, police officers, they do the best with this. Like I have one in, in um, uh, Douglas, Georgia. He sold 7,000 cases to farmers. Oh, wow. So, wow. That's a lot. That's that's really, that's well done. Yeah, he, you know, he just was able to kind of think creatively, like, and that's what, you know, the, the challenge of PBM reimbursement, you know, is really having you know, stores to think, different about how their uh, healthcare destination, not just a dispenser yep. of medicine. And he was able to really connect our product and leverage it. And I usually joke around, hey, you know, this product probably isn't going to mitigate I know, all your DIR fees, but it will help you. With him, it mitigated all his DIR fees and more. You know, mm-hmm. he sold wow. a quarter million dollars of this stuff. Huh. Um, oh, wow. Well, and, so and, he, and how long ago was that? So that's over the last year or two. Yeah. Okay. So, he, so, he so does he expect to keep doing ago. that? Do they keep ordering? Yeah, he orders now seven pallets at a time. Wow. How frequent? And obviously obviously that's an anomaly. So about every two, three months. Well, mm-hmm. just an anomaly of the way that he so, marketed it. Yeah, right. Like that's that's my biggest thing is trying to teach stores. One, you know, when I walk in and they don't know me and uh, they don't know the product, there's some cynicism. Like, is this a marketing gimmick? Like, you know, because so many products you know, have come out that really don't don't do what they say they're going to do. Uh, so getting over that initial cynicism and then helping them, uh, you know, take the time to to open up and think creatively about not only how to use BioLite, but how to use, 
you know, your software, how to use Chris's uh, program with solutions, mm-hmm. you know, we're having to do, you know, things differently. And I know change is hard, but, you know, if you want to compete in this new healthcare landscape, you know, transitioning to more of a clinical based healthcare destination is going to be what it takes. Well, and the interesting thing with your product is you're not just pharmacy only is that you're in also athletics and everything else. So I'm sitting here going, God, how many trade shows a year do you go to? Or does the company go to? <laughs> I want to see that yeah, marketing so, budget. Yeah, we have a guy that just does uh, the trade show setups and make sure everything runs smoothly. You know, I, I was kidding around with some of my friends that had booth envy of your all's booth and, you know, saw Marsha there setting it up and getting everybody in line. And I thought that was impressive. But, you know, Thank yeah, you. we do uh, all, all, all the pharmacy wholesalers, all the buying groups. Uh, we do, you know, some grocery store type of expos. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're getting into more of the athletic, punt, uh, you know, deal. And we're also working with pharmacies if they're doing shows or events, you know, healthcare fairs or, hey, we got something going on with the high school football team. Mm-hmm. We're sending up samples for them to use. And I'm telling them, hey, you know, take these samples to your event. You know, take these uh, brochures, clip your card. And maybe that will drive some people in your store to try it. And maybe you can convert them to, uh, you know, a prescription based customer. So you have marketing materials to help them market as well, the brochures and stuff. Huh. Right, right. Yeah, we have tons of tons of customized brochures for like the, the different seasons and conditions and um, just a bunch of uh, point of sale stuff they can put in the stores. Then we've developed uh, a lot of, you know, videos that mm-hmm. are talking about the importance of hydration during the times and conditions and how Biolite, you know, fits into that and uh, how it's a little bit different than everything else on the market. Okay. So what about the future? Do, you, do y'all have any, is there, is there a product expansion? Do you have a little uh, Biolite shots? You're- up until this point, we've only had the ready to drink because how strong it is. Mm-hmm. We are working on a powder, but we don't want to jeopardize the formula. Right. Because like the powder sticks, you would have to take three of those powder sticks to equal one of these bottles. So we're, we're the, the formula, we're, we have scientists that are working on that. You know, I think that will be something we will do. And um, it will help pharmacies because there'll be e- easier distribution that can right. be on planograms mm-hmm. a little bit easier. Um, something that is really neat that we're doing right now is we're doing a, a breast cancer campaign in October where we're going to have pink bottles and we're donating a dollar of every bottle sold of those pink bottles to the American Cancer uh, uh, Society. So, Very you know, cool. there's just, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're hoping to work with the pharmacies on that. Obviously, you know, that's the origin story and, um, you know, that's something we want to give back. You know, we've been doing some philanthropy with, um, you know, we sent some pallets down with last year, year with Hurricane Ida and some of the flooding in Tennessee. Um, so we're trying to do our do our part in that. Um, you know, really the next point, this point with the medical side is, like I said, you know, going to some of the, the chemo oncologists and uh, teaching uh, hospice companies and gastro docs about, Y'all going to bring on some more salespeople? Actually, we hired our first uh, uh, partner for me. I've been doing the. I was the the one and only for the medical side. Um, when I started, I was the fifth em- em- employee, I believe, and now we're up to about thirty five. Um, but we have now somebody that's going to help me in the pharmacy space. Nice. And where did they come from? So they uh, were with the buying group, and uh, you know I worked with them as a partner for you know, a, a couple of years now and just saw the authenticity and, and energy and uh, just that the willingness to help, you know, independent pharmacies like me. And, you know, he kind of conveyed, hey, I, you know, I need a little bit of a, a, a change and a pace and scene and uh, like the product. And it's just uh, it's going to be a great fit. And he has some relationships with organizations that I'm not as strong in and me vice versa. So the plan is to kind of leverage some of our our you know, buying group partnerships and wholesaler mm-hmm. partnerships. Uh, you know, we've been sending out samples to all these reps all over the country, hoping that they will, uh, you know, either there's the wholesale business is the most hydrated sales force or they're getting samples out to the stores, I hope. And then we'll also, we'll also have to get your product at Connect this June. So, um, and add you to our vendor list. Um, get you one more show. To go yeah. to get you get, add one more to your <laughs> well, list. it's nearby, so yeah, won't have to go far. I mean, so it will be in Nashville your, next yeah. year, practically in your backyard. Yeah, no, obviously Nashville is a great uh, 
a, a great spot to have a show. And I've heard so many good things about, you know, y'all show and how, you know, clinically focused it is. And mm-hmm. I, I've been, you know, a big fan of the platform. Um, I think Marsha, I was telling you at, at Thought Spot, you know, it would be one of those things where, um, you know, my conversations with independent pharmacies would have to be adapted based on their pharmacy software, not being able to do certain things. So when I had a store that was using, uh, you know, more innovative software like you guys, it's like, okay, we can really get into sync. We can really get into packaging. Uh, we, you, you know exactly what your inventory is at, at a time. And, you know, it's just, uh, it's really refreshing to see the, the pharmacies utilize, you know, more innovative software. You're, you're very driven on, you know, I wanted to learn everything about pharmacy because you, your, your education was not pharmacy. What was your, what was your bachelor's in your, you've got a, an MBA. So what, what was your degree? So marketing management and actually uh, taught some courses at community college (laughs) and marketing uh, on the side. I I love it. Uh, Marketing, healthcare marketing. Healthcare Healthcare marketing marketing. at at the community college. Okay. Okay. So give us a give us a healthcare marketing tip. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it, it it was one of those things I was scared to death, you know, because I didn't ever see myself being in that space, and um, mm-hmm. you know, got pushed by a friend to do it because they they needed somebody, and really it was uh, a lot about hey, how can you apply this in in the actual you know real world? You know, we can talk theoretically about the four P's, you know, product placement, you know, promotion, all the stuff, mm-hmm. but you know what. When you get out into the real world and, and you're working for a you know a, a med surge company or a you know a device company, what what's it going to look like? How are you going to develop the type of relationships? You know, so using a lot of my my personal background to uh, to to teach them in a way that's more applied learning. Nice. Okay, so I'm bouncing back because the name finally clicked in my head. So you said that uh, BioLite is awesome for breastfeeding for women who are breastfeeding. Um, are you familiar with Stacy Welling? I've heard I've heard her name, yes, yeah. And Whaley's babies. So she start she's um she's a marketer. She's not a pharmacist, but her dad was the was the pharmacy and they her and her husband took it over. And she started a program because she realized that um you know, that there's no good coaching for breastfeeding. It's like, oh, by the way, you're pregnant. Good luck figuring it out from here. And, oh, don't forget to take your supplements. So she started a program that anytime a woman comes into her pharmacy, to, um, to, it, to she created a trigger, um, a care plan in Pioneer that says, hey, s- stop right there, ask, there, ask for all these questions, welcome her into our, um, our breastfeeding and mom program. And so that would be one to, for you to connect with and get her product in new yeah they franchise hands. yeah and, and so she has multiple locations right. what's it what's the it's called Whaley's, Whaley, babies. Whaley's babies yeah and they do baby products and mm-hmm. breastfeeding products in, in mm-hmm. multiple stores yeah might be fun to connect with her yep. where's she out of arkansas yeah I might, think... we'll have to we'll have to get you her contact information yes well i'll have to connect you with um stacy welling you'll love her everything is pink yeah no it's as it should be with babies it's so <laughs> so neat to kind of see some of these owners and what they're doing. You know, I, I always say, you know, people get starstruck. I'm kind of a nerd and I get uh, pharmacy struck, you know, seeing people like Amina or Travis Wolf at shows and just following everything they're doing. Like I said, I'm not the yes, smartest, but especially you know, I know, following you know, everything Amina and Travis are doing on Facebook. Right. Those conversations always just have me on the floor dying, especially the memes that Travis Wolf creates. Yeah, those guys are just wonderful, and and they're they're creating pioneer type of you know programs that are just uh, going to be phenomenal to save community pharmacy. You know, mm-hmm. you have so many stores that are upset and and anger, and that's driven by the fear of not having things that they can control. You know, they can't control if a plan's kicking them out next year in Part D. They can't yep. control mm-hmm. what the DIR fees necessarily are going to be next year. Um, you know, it's just a lot of a lot of tough things that they're dealing with, and you you can see the anger and frustration. But you also see pharmacies that like those guys that are like, well, you know, this is what I do. I'm not going to do something different. I'm going to figure out a way to, you know, pay the, you know, pay the pathway and be, um, you know, a valuable asset in my community. And no matter what the PBMs do, you know, I'm going to find a way to, to, to make it. Mm-hmm. And, and you nailed it right there. That one of the other biggest fears is, is change. 
Um, and so identifying the problem and knowing exactly what you need to do to do it and then I mean, actually take that step to help your business grow sometimes changes the fear. Yeah. I always tell people who tell who say they don't like change, they're in the wrong industry and probably on the wrong software. You're, right? Yeah. And our, and our the favorite uh, child's movie to reference is The Croods. I don't know if you've watched that with your nieces. Um, the little the caveman. Oh, yeah. it's the like, change is bad. Die. Yeah. I'm going to die. You change, you die. And, it's, and then the, the end is that, hey, change is actually good and you live. So you be at NCPA? Oh, yeah, definitely. We were there last year and, you know, it's, it's great to see people that are t- practicing at the top of the license. And obviously that's where, you know, the conference that they, they're choosing um, as a priority. So, you know, we just love the conference circuit because people are, are open to new ideas. They're not stressed out by the 10 things on their mind or the, the tech behind them, poking them on the shoulder, you know, saying, hey, I got a problem. So it's a great way for us to, to get in front of people when they're receptive to, to creativity. Um, so we'll We'll definitely be there. And, you know, it's it's fun. I love talking to, to stores. I kind of kid around. You know, we talk about change being bad that, you know, my position at McKesson was 20 percent bartender, you know, and 80 percent personal trainer so and coach. So, hey, let's OK, let, you can vent about the things that are happening. And obviously not many people understand the complexity of this industry. So mm-hmm. let's talk about that. But now let's go. Let's transition into talking about given the circumstances what can we do to, to empower ourselves to take action and, and uh, feel a little bit better about the direction of the business? Hmm. Nice. I like cool. that part. I'm a, I'm a bartender and I'm also a personal trainer, so I know what I can mix up tonight <laughs> and try different things. Like, I want to get into mixology. I'm kind of curious of trying different things other than just always walking in and going, all the old-fashioned, like everyone else is doing. <laughs> so... And always finding like new interesting drinks. It's like, oh yeah, this is good. How can I keep ordering this at other places? But some places make such unique stuff that can't be replicated. Yeah, we started this podcast in the pandemic to kind of replace us getting to talk to people and going we, around and visiting yeah. pharmacies and stuff like that. It, and the original <laughs> idea was this was a drinking podcast, and I I, I still there kind was, of upset there, that we didn't do that. <laughs> yes, this is going to bar. We're going to mix our favorite drink, right? And then and, just sit here and drink and talk. And yeah, and so like, listen, the, the drink of the day is, and we're going to teach you how to make a drink, yeah. right? And and uh, and and then we're going to talk about it. yeah. I don't know. And I'm, I'm sitting there thinking of all the conversations. There's like, there's still level. time, Marsha. We still can do it. <laughs> yeah, we would just have to, uh, like, probably schedule it for, like, a 1 o'clock session. So it's like, uh-huh. hey, we've got food in our yep. stomach. Got a 1 o'clock. Now we we just got an Uber. We got it. No, no, no. If you're, if you're doing the podcast and drinking at 1, then you've got the rest of the day to, like, go. But we would okay. have to send the guest a cocktail kit as well. Yes. And they'd have to make it at the same time we were. Well, except yes and no. Because it's like, hey. I like the yes really good, and I don't like the no. It was, yes. Okay, you you send somebody a cocktail. What if he's not a bourbon drinker? What if he's more of a vodka gin guy? He would pretend. And then, and then he's taking a drink. He would like, drink it mm, like medicine. This is so good. Like, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't this good? This is why we love to. If it's at 1 o'clock, we'll Don Draper it like Mad Men, you know, midday drinking like they did That's back right. in the, yeah. the, the 50s. We, yeah. Ooh, what about in the podcast? Because so. Um, at NCPA, there will be a Catalyst Pharmacy podcast booth. What if we do the cocktails in there? It's, nice. There's going to be a couch. We're going to we're gonna, we're gonna replace one of the tables with a bar. Yes. Yeah. I think there's probably something. I, I think you have to have a bartender when you're in a hotel. Remember when we do, they don't let it's you. It's in a convention center. Is it different? It's not in the, it's not in a hotel. Oh. So I got a great story about that. Um, no. <laughs> I'll see. It's a story. drinking story. We're going, well, it's a, it's a conference uh, exclusion story. So we're going to, all, obviously, all these Gaylord conference centers. We're going to uh, Mandalay Bay. And every time they try to uh, hijack my product and kick me out, they're like, no outside beverage. It's in the contract. Oh. You can't mm-hmm. bring this in. And I have to say, you know, sir, ma'am, this is a liquid supplement for oncology patients. And this is a medical conference. You, you know, this isn't a water. So... That just happened. Lisa Fast is doing her uh, uh, her it conference in Dallas. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 
and and they they held my product hostage because I sent a bunch of samples for for the conference, and they held it hostage for a day because they said, hey, you know, this no outside beverage. That's that's you can't do it. Yeah. So it's happened multiple times. Interesting. And we're you know I like to say we're we're a little guy too, just like these pharmacies. We're battling these corporate, uh, you know the. Coke and Pepsi contracts with these sports teams, the contracts with these conference centers, um, but you know, trying to find a creative way to 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 get in there and, and do our thing. But yeah, yeah I, I completely have to always, forgot about you know, that. You're, get, you're bringing a bottled beverage yeah, in beverage. there, and that's that's. Have one you ever of the have you ever just been shut down and not able to convince them? So at the McKesson show, we were about there. Like this guy was like, "You're you're going to have to take all 108 cases out of here right now," and I just stared at him like you know, froze and thinking there's no way you, mm-hmm. that's, I, you know, I, I, we're not leaving like this. I've been waiting for this for years, you know, post pandemic. Um, so I said, Hey, can I talk to your boss and kind of explain what this is? And he got her on the phone and she kind of calmed him down. <laughs> we had to sign a waiver uh, saying we're not selling anything, but yeah, we were about there. We ha- we were going to have to pack our pallet. Okay. Was that a you McKesson know, person? That the hotel people. That was hotel people. No, it's, yeah, yeah, and the the Gaylord seems to be a little bit more strict than uh, mm-hmm. the other ones. Yeah, so huh. I'll I'll so so there for, goes your bar. Out, so you can't have a you can't have an outside beverage. You can go. We'd have to hire oh, the hotel. I'm sure they'd let no, no, you no. pay for the, the yeah. We would just beverage. borrow their menu thing and go. Yeah, cool. That we're gonna do this in our booth and we'll pay for it. But no, um, I'll make sure to ask so um and include you on the email with our hotel contacts for connect. Um, to make sure that you don't have any issues. Yeah, you pre-solve it. Yeah, yep. pre-solve it. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll have to just add that. I'll I'll let Ann know to add that to the conversation. And for, really, we could work out a deal in CPA, right? We get him drunk, and then he gives him the electrolytes <laughs> to get better. Right? There we go. <laughs> Send him to his booth. We actually, there was a trade show. Um, I think it was a value drug. I don't remember. There was there was a trade show that they actually had a bar for the vendors. It was a buying trade show. So it was one of these buying groups and and they try to get special deals for their members. And it was a buying show where you go around and you buy stuff. And they had a bar for the vendors because, hey, we get the vendors drunk and they'll sell it cheaper. It was oh, a total yeah. scheme. So, so you should be there. We need to figure out mm-hmm. who that is. I, I think it was a value drug. But the, it, was, no? it was, I think it was IPC. Like, oh, it was a value they, drug. Because oh, they opened up the cocktail hour like early. And then, yeah, they opened up the cocktail. Well, maybe it was them too. <laughs> it was definitely. But I think IPC is not going to have, they're going to do their shot McKesson now from now on. Okay. Yeah. But, it, it was IPC um, in uh, California. But yeah, I'll make sure to um, get you, to take care of you for our event next year and make sure that you don't have any pushback um, and yeah. get the no, right no people signed emotional off. Emotional trauma. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the emotional trauma. But no, we should be at we should be adding that to our questionnaire when we talk to these hotels. Going, hey, we have a vendor that will be exhibiting um, and handing out medicine. samples, but it's it's basically liquid medicine, but and, it looks like Gatorade. And really, you could just do here, take a drink. <laughs> this is medicine. This, this is not. This is not a. That's that's what you should do. Give it's, them a sample. It's non-alcoholic. Just say it's non-alcoholic, yeah. and it's it's medicine, mm-hmm. right? So it's it's good for you. Yeah. I tried to explain to him, hey, hey, look, people will be drinking more of your alcohol by using this because they're not going to feel crappy the next day and they'll be back. So we're helping you, not hurting you. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. That's where the blank stare came from. <laughs> All right. Well, Chris, um, it's been fun. Yeah, we are at our hour. So um, super exciting meeting you and, and getting to know you a little better yeah. and learning all about your background. And, of course, now I want to see Dot pick the pictures of the puppies. So. Yeah, so I have to come by when we come by and see. Will you be at NACDS? I think we'll be at NACDS in a couple of weeks. Oh, yeah. No, unfortunately not. After the, the big three, we kind of ha- are going to have to take a little bit of a conference break. Um, and, and, you know, I got so much following up to do. But, yeah, I, the NACDS show is amazing. I'm sure we'll be there the following year. Yeah, well, but cool. I, so we'll I see you at NCPA. We'll see it in CPA and yeah. and uh, we'll have pictures of Spain because we're going to Spain early September and uh, you can show us pictures of your dogs eating rocks. <laughs> there you go. Tapas or rocks? What yeah, do tapas. we want to do? Tapas or rocks. All right. Well, thanks, Chris, and uh, have a great day. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. See you. Thank you for watching the Catalyst Pharmacy Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, please like, subscribe, and follow us wherever you get your podcast. 
Give us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts to help us reach more pharmacy professionals like you.